that's the only program we got tonight, baby. Hey. Why don't y'all sing that last verse and that conclusion again? Hey, it's got to be good to you. Hey. I'm, not, I'm not pushing for another altar call. I'm not pushing for another movement. But if God's been good to you, won't just bow your head right there where you at? Lift up your hands and just thank you, baby. Amen. 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 Amen.
They forsook all and followed him. I'm interested tonight in verse number 5 where the Bible says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Brother Justin, would you pray tonight, brother, that God's word would just go forth in power and anointing this evening. tonight, but one of our men, Brother Peter Chamberlain, preached the message at our conference last week, and I just could not get away from the thought that he brought out of Luke chapter number 5, and uh, just, like I said, I had other things, other directions I could have gone, but I believe this is what the Lord Amen. has for us this evening. Uh, our text tonight gives us an account in the life of Simon Peter when the next step in his walk with God was based solely on the Word of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Our text gives us an account in the life of Simon Peter when the next step in his Christian life, his walk with God, was based solely on, a, on the statement and the commandment that Jesus Christ gave him. Now having said that, let me say this. Honey, you can rest assured there will come a time in your Christian life when your progress and success will hinge on your ability and willingness to step out on the Word of God plus nothing minus nothing. Amen. I will say that again. You can rest assured it is coming. There is a situation coming. There is something, a storm coming, a decision coming where your progress and success in your Christian life will hinge upon your ability and willingness just to take God at His Word plus nothing minus nothing. Let me say this. I appreciate the fact that Peter was willing to move forward in his Christian life without any goosebumps. He was willing to move forward without any tingles. He was willing to move forward without a vision, without a dream, without a new revelation, without a praise band, without a coffee shop, amen, without a water slide, amen. He was willing to step forward and take his next step with God with nothing but the Word of God. And may I say this, God help us. God help me, amen. All Peter needed to move forward in his Christian life was a word from the Master. God help Charlie Russell to get there, amen. Let me give you just a couple of things here this evening. And I promise you I won't be long tonight. Let me say first of all, as Peter stepped out on this word the Lord gave him and I went on with this Christian life, let me say this. Number one, past experience did not hinder him. Past experience did not hinder him. Look at verse number four. Now when they had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Watch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Basically, and I'm just going to jump right in this, keep it simple. Jesus said, Peter, go fishing. Drop your net. Peter replied, Lord, the last time I went fishing, it didn't go so hot. Amen. The results were not that great. He did not fish for an hour. He did not fish for two hours. The Bible says he fished all night long and the results were nothing. The results were deficient and praise God, the results were depressing. Amen. Now, let me 
let me say this also. Peter also had calluses on his hands, bloody fingers, and a sore back to testify of his past experience fishing. Let me say this. Peter was at a crossroads. Do I base my next step with God on past results? Or present revelation. See, Peter's hearing two voices. Y'all still awake? Peter's hearing two voices. Past results are saying, don't try. That's the message of past results. But present revelation is saying, drop your nets. So Peter's got to make up his mind. What message is he going to listen to? The message of past results or the message of present revelation. Amen. 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 And thank God, hallelujah, Peter had enough sense not to listen to the voice of past results, but praise God, he listened to the voice of present revelation and experienced a miracle. Amen. Amen. I was sitting at my desk today thinking about this point. And I got to thinking, uh, look at this phrase right here. I love this right here. Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That's all he had. I got to thinking, I was meditating on this in my office today. And I got to thinking about Brother Michael Cheryl. That's scary, amen. But I got to think about Brother Michael Cheryl on Sunday morning. He's sitting there with his wife, writing out a tithe, writing out his tithe check. And all of a sudden it dawns on him. The last time I wrote out a tie check, my house burned down. <laughs> I don't know if this tithing business is really working or not. Miss Kathy says, well, Mike, you know the Bible says we're to tithe. And Brother Mike says, honey, you're right. Lord, I know my house burned down, but nevertheless, at thy word, I'm a writing her out again. Amen. Amen. I got to think about Brother Harry Hensley. He's in his house. Oh God, send revival. Oh God, just do something at Calvary. God, help our church, revive the church. Help Brother Kathy and all. And it dawns on him. The last time he got serious with God, his cancer come back. Anybody awake? But you know what? He said, Lord, I can't go on past results. I'm still praying for a Amen. I got to think about Brother Jerry Jones. He gets up on Saturday morning. Getting ready to go visit his bus route. And he remembers the last Saturday. Got bit by a dog. Got squirted with pepper spray. Got cussed and threatened. He, he lost track of time and come home late. And Sister Joyce belted him with a frying pan. <laughs> And he said, Lord, you remember what happened the last time I went out visiting? The results were not that great. But Lord, your word says, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. And I'm going again. Amen. 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 I got to think about Brother Kenny Chris. He's sitting down Sunday morning writing out his check to missions. All of a sudden it dawns on him. The last time I wrote out a missions check, I had two garbage trucks to blow up. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know what he did? Lord, last time I did this, the results were not that great. But praise God, your word says to give. And it shall be given unto you. And I'm just going on your word. Amen. Sometimes, if you're looking at past experience for inspiration and hope, you won't find it. But there's one sure place you'll always find inspiration. There's one place you'll always find hope. There's one place that will always tell you to go forward. And it's the word of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I was thinking uh, about Jeremiah.
preached in Jeremiah chapter number 38. He didn't get a love offering. He didn't get interviewed by Christianity today. He didn't get his picture on the cover of the sword of the Lord. He got thrown in a septic tank. That's chapter 38. You know what it said in chapter 40? And the word of the Lord come unto Jeremiah. Amen. He said, praise God. Past experience wasn't too good. Past experience wasn't too positive. But praise God, i got another meeting to preach. And I can't wait to go. Amen. 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 Past experience did not hinder him. Amen. Amen. Then let me say this. Number two. Present exhaustion did not hinder him. Look at the last part of verse number five, or the middle part of verse number five. The Bible says that Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. I entered the workforce the summer before my 10th grade year in high school. Working fast food. I got off at 9.30 at night. I'd go home. I was 16, 17, 18 years old, along about that age. Get off at 9.30 at night. I'd go home, take a shower, change my clothes. I'd go out. Stay out 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Later on, I got a job in the furniture factory. We worked from 7 to 3.30. I'd get off work at 3.30, go wash my car, go ride my bike. Right up to Asheville to see my parents. Then I got a third shift job in a hosiery mill. <laughs> Went in to work at 11 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock in the morning. Buddy, when I got off work at 7 o'clock in the morning, all I wanted was a bed. <laughs> Don't ask me to explain this, but there's a difference between tooling in the day and tooling at night. I can tool all day and still cut grass. I can tool all day and still wash my car. I can tool all day and still take my wife out there. But honey, eight hours on third shift, I'm done. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Peter was exhausted. Amen. I said he was exhausted. But in spite of his exhaustion, he, he went on with God. Amen. I think I shocked my son the other week. He come up to the prison with me. I got a ticket. I got to tell you this. After we were done, we visited. We'd had church. And I said, son, do you feel the call? He said, dad, God wants me to preach. He's going to have to send a handwritten letter from Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey Amen. We had a good time, though. We, had, we, had, we had real, actually had a real good time. Amen. But uh, I think I shocked him. We were in my office. I was. I think we're getting some tracks and stuff together, getting ready to go out and do some witnessing. And. Uh, he said, Dad, how about how much time do you spend in your office on any given week? I said, Son, there's days I don't leave this office. There's days I lock the door, pull the shades, put my feet up on the desk, and don't go out nowhere. I said, how come, Brother Russell? Because I get exhausted. Hey. Amen. I'm preaching to people tonight. You're not hey. that sweet. You're not carnal. You're not in sin. You're not wicked. You're just tired. Yes. Tired of the battle. Tired of the storms. Tired of the problems. Tired of the pressures. Amen. We've all been there. Amen. Amen. I said we've all been Amen. there. Amen. Yesterday, one of our revival team leaders, he does revival just 15 minutes from the house at the Catawba Correctional Center. He's always asking me to come, so I promised him I would come this time. And Pastor got me to come tonight. I was planning on going tonight, but I had to be here tonight, so I said I'll come Tuesday night, which was last night. I was planning on leaving Mountain City early. Got two death notices. One inmate, brother overdosed on drugs. Another inmate, 
His father died with cancer. And you just can't go in there and say, hey dude, your loved one died, I'll see you later. Amen. you got to sit with them, you got to listen to them, you got to let them cry, you got to let them unload. It's called ministry. Amen. It's called being a chaplain. It's called being a pastor. Amen. It's called Amen. ministry. So I ministered to those men and got out of prison in Mountain City a lot later than I had planned, rushed home, grabbed something to eat, headed over to the prison, and I was just praying, dear God, don't let me fall asleep. Exhausted. Tired. Wore out. But Brother Kay, I took that step. Got up and preached. And the Lord moved and we had four saved there. Amen. Sometimes when you've gone as far as you can go, sometimes when you've done all you can do, sometimes when you gave all you can gave, sometimes when you've worked all you can work, if you'll just take one more step, praise God, you might get your net full there. Amen. Peter was physically exhausted. But he took that one step and got a miracle. Amen. Amen. Then let me give you this. Not only did past experience did not hinder him, present exhaustion did not hinder him, but number three, personal emptiness did not hinder him. Look at verse number five again. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken what? A little bit louder. Nothing. All together. How much is nothing? nothing? What's nothing plus nothing? nothing. What's nothing divided by nothing? nothing. What's nothing times nothing? nothing? What's the square root of nothing? nothing. What did he bring in? Nothing. nothing. Amen. What did Peter have to bring to this equation? Nothing. 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 At least the little boy. And the other story had five loaves and two fishes to bring to the table. I got to thank my wife. She'd rather fish than eat. She's telling me when she was a little girl, she'd catch those little fish uh, that were too little to keep, but she'd cut them up and use them for bait. Praise God, I'm married Rambo, however. <laughs> Lord of God, if the economy ever collapses, she'll get us through. <laughs> Survival war. Peter didn't even get that much. Amen. Didn't say to call a minute. Didn't say to call a brim. Didn't say to call, to call what? Amen. Nothing. But you know what? He had absolutely nothing to bring to the table, but in spite of of His personal emptiness. Glory to God. He saw the hand of God. He saw a miracle. And He went home full. Amen. I was thinking, uh, God called me to preach in February of 1990. You know what I had to bring to the equation? Nothing. No experience. Knew how to roll a joint. Amen. 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 Do everywhere that can sell me beer. Amen. You know nothing about preaching. Anybody awake? Amen. 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 No experience, no background. My father was a truck driver. My one grandfather was a barber. My other grandfather was a contractor. No background in ministry. No education. Barely. I was one of those brilliant, I told y'all one other time, I was one of those brilliant students that squeezed 12 years of school into 14. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful hard, but I did it. Amen. Barely graduated high school, had a degree in furniture production management. No education. And this is the kicker, Brother Harry. Are you ready for this? I had no desire. I did not want to preach. I had my life the way I wanted it. No background, no education, no experience, and the kicker, brother and sister, I had.
had no desire. But I learned something. My nothing plus God's everything equals something big. I said my nothing, Brother Beaver, plus God's everything equals something big. Say, Brother Russ, I need revival. I need a miracle. I need a touch of God. My marriage needs help. My health needs help. My finances need help. My kids need help. But I have nothing to bring to the equation. Well, glory to God, you're a candidate for a miracle. Amen. 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 Nothing. Praise the Lord. We saw a miracle. Amen. Amen. Then let me give you this. I'm done. I'm still praying on somebody, somebody's going to come in here and get y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and institutionalized. Hallelujah. Ain't we having a good time? Yeah. I'm glad I come to church. Yeah. You know what blows my mind? Y'all know I was going to be here, but you came anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Past experience did not hinder him. Present exhaustion did not hinder him. Personal emptiness did not hinder him. Then this is a good one right here, and I'm done. Pitiful expectations did not hinder him. Look what it says right here. Look at verse number four. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your what? Yes. How many is that? More than one? Maybe two, maybe three, maybe twenty. We don't know. But we know it's plural. More than one. Verse number five. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the what? Yes. Net. How many did Jesus tell him to let down? Yes. All of them. Many. How many did Peter let down? One. 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 Amen. You know what? Why did Peter only let down one net? Because he wasn't expecting that. Right. Brother Russell, how come you walk into Calvary Church? You look like your dog just got run over. You look like your mother in law moved in with you. You look like you lost your best friend. And you come down and you sit in here and you look half dead because I ain't expecting nothing. Amen. A lot of times I walk in Calvary Baptist Church and I'm thinking to myself, okay, Rev, you do your deal and preach. I'll do my deal and listen. We'll get this deal done and go to meet Pueblos. <laughs> and don't look at me like that. <coughs> why did Peter only why did Peter only let down one net? He wasn't expecting nothing. Why do we come to church? Why do I come to church with the attitude I've got many times? Because I ain't expecting nothing. Amen. I'm preaching myself, y'all. Huh? I'm just blessed to listen. Amen. Amen. I got a call. I got a call in January. Phone rang. Got off the phone. But said, who's that? Is that Brother Josh McGurman? She said, what do you want? I said, he wants me to come preach a youth camp in July. She said, what do you think about that? I said, I think he's out of God's will. <laughs> I'm a prison preacher, man. I attract felons. <laughs> I attract gangsters. And I'm, I'm not one of these preachers that young people flock to. <laughs> I'm not one of these preachers that young people text me their problems. I think it boils down. Chesty told me years ago, Daddy, you look mean when you preach. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm just not one of these preachers that young people like. My stars, my own kids don't even like. <laughs> and and, and this Wendy, you know what my prayer was for that youth meeting? You know what my prayer was? This was my prayer. Lord, just get me through this. <laughs> That was my prayer. Just get me through it. But you know what, Brother Clark? I preached the first night. The altar's filled up. Amen. I preached the second night. 
The altar is filled up. Third night and fourth night, same thing. And in spite of my pitiful expectations, I think three were saved. Amen. Others got help. Amen. 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 Pitiful Amen. expectations, but I still saw them here. You say, well, Brother Russell, you know, I heard Brother Pike and Dahl back at Jubilee, and to be honest with you, Brother Russell, I really didn't like it. I didn't like his style of preaching. His style of delivery just didn't do much for me. But you know what, brother? I'm going to come to revival because I don't want Brother Chris fussing at me. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Your spirit's sorry. Your attitude's sorry. Your expectations are sorry. But I got good news. You're still a candidate for revival. Amen. Brother, come here. You're going to be John. You're going to be John. I'm Peter. Do y'all get? y'all see how ridiculous this is? Do y'all see how ridiculous this is? Jesus said, put down your nets. Man, I ain't putting down all those nets. Man, I just cleaned them by. <laughs> he might be the son of God, but I'm a professional fisherman. <laughs> He might be God in the flesh, but I'm an expert. <laughs> Y'all see how ridiculous that is? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Low expectation. Yeah. 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 Thank you, brother. It's crazy. But that's us. Yeah. It's Peter is just a, is a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> that's all Peter is. He is a selfie of us. Amen. Well, we know you're the Son of God, but this is 2014. God, we, we know you can do anything, but this is a different day and age. Amen. But you know what's a blessing? God feels sorry for people with beautiful expectations. Amen. And in spite of all that, Amen. Peter still got a here. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. And I'm done tonight. It's, it's still early somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. Are you basing your Christian life on past experience? Are you basing your Christian life on per present exhaustion? Are you basing your Christian life on personal emptiness? Are you basing your life on pitiful expectations? Or are you basing your life on the Word of God? Amen. 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 There's a lot of days the only thing I have to go on, Brother James, when I walk into Northeast Correctional Complex, is go ye therefore in all the world and Amen. preach the gospel. Amen. That Brother Clark, I'm empty. I'm exhausted. There's nothing there. Sister Robin, all I've got is go. Amen. 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 Sometimes all you're going to have when you write that tithe check is give. Amen. That's all you're going to have. Your house is in ruins. You're living out of a suitcase. Yeah. Bunch of knucklehead contractors running in circles. But you got give. That's all you got. But hey, you got you got rabies. Right? You got stitches. Right? Guys are swelled from pepper spray. But you got to go. Brother Kerry, there's going to be times to mark it down. All you're going to have is preach. That's all you're going to have. No results. Amen. 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 Amen.